Since the end of the brilliant Shogun, I've been looking for some more historical dramas to whet my appetite. Having read Gary Jennings' The Journeyer, The Erotic Adventures of Marco Polo, I thought, I wonder if they've turned that into a TV show. Well, they haven't, but instead, we have the next best thing, Netflix's Marco Polo. Two seasons of Latin on Mongol action. Unfortunately, Marco Polo was cancelled at the end of season two because it was just too expensive. But how does What We Got hold up after a decade since its release? Sadly, the answer is not very well. The show is a mix between historical events and soap opera melodrama. The parts where the politics of the Mongol Empire and its current ruler Kublai Khan are being tested by the desire to expand and keep true to their Mongol heritage was pretty damn interesting. But the rest of it was filled with saucy sex scenes and lustful looks across crowded rooms that I could honestly do without. It seems that every time there's a feast, Marco Polo sets his gaze upon some unusually European looking woman. In a city full of weather beaten tribeswomen from the steppes of Mongolia, there always seems to be a very demure, very European looking woman who catches Marco's eye. Compare the women that Marco sleeps with to the women he doesn't. You'll see what I mean. Anyway, once they have their chance meeting, they'll duck off somewhere and shag. Two episodes later, it's, Marco, please come and meet my daughter. She's been promised the hand of the Prince of Timbuktu. Towards the end of season two, Marco meets a belly dancer at a feast and shags her. She tells him not to get too attached as she'll be leaving in the morning. I was waiting for her to reveal who her parents were or who her husband is, but the show ended before I could get closure. Approximately one third of the show is revolving around the fact that Kublai Khan's son is impotent and his mother is basically forcing his wife to sleep with any buff dude to get knocked up. This is where the show really drags to a halt. We know that the kid is not his, but the show drags it out for a whole 10 episodes. I just don't care. The second season ends with one of the most ridiculous things I've seen on TV in many a year. In an earlier episode, Kublai Khan recalls how his grandfather Genghis asked for a tribute from a city of a bird, let's say a sparrow, per household. His plan was to tie a string to their feet and attach a smouldering ember, so when the birds return to their nest they will set fire to every building in the city. Pretty clever. Well Kublai reuses this plan, except he sets fire to horses and has them run back to the camp they're from. Not only do these horses manage to run in a straight line while on fire, they last for the entire journey. We're talking multiple minutes of running while on fire. If they had them pull a blazing sled or draped a burning blanket over them, maybe I could see it happening. Then to top it all off, the flaming horses run all the way into the center of the enemy camp and one of the horses just happens to take a running jump into a massive stack of gunpowder barrels that they had stacked up in the center of the camp. And don't get me started about the final fight. Every named character is cutting down tens of nameless enemy soldiers. They're completely unharmed, just cutting them down as they attack one after the other. I have to make special mention of the accents. I don't know if this was filmed in Australia or had an Australian production company, but hearing Mongols speak with an Australian accent really distracted me. I'm sure to an American audience, the Australian accent seems to be exotic enough to get away with it. But for me, it felt like I was listening to my mechanic. I had asked people if the second season wraps things up in a satisfying enough way, and I was informed that it does have an ending. Well, I'm here to tell you that it does not. There's an emergency and Marco Polo says to Kublai Khan, we must get on our horses and ride. That is the last we see of them. The issue they were riding for is not resolved. The entire fate of the Khanate is still up in the air and it is not an ending that is in any way satisfying. Had the season ended properly, I would have given Marco Polo a 6 out of 10. However, it never ends up resolving the main storyline, so I'm dropping that down to a 4 out of 10. It's an incomplete story that is well told, with great sets, costumes, props, and mostly good acting, besides the accents. Benedict Wong as Kublai is probably the best thing about Marco Polo. But it's just a shame they couldn't have given it another hour or two to wrap things up. Maybe in a movie length episode. Thanks for watching. 
If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.